Okay. Uh, well, we saw the funny things now in Tom's presentation. So enough of interesting and fun things, and now let's go into trouble, or rather, let's go into a little bit of of uh, of a bore because. Many of the things I'm going to talk now, uh, you already know very well. I'm probably give you a slightly different perspective or something which is very well known by you. And uh, the reason for this is that I want to put the, the meat of, of the presentation, which is in the second half, in, in an appropriate context. So we all agree on what we are actually talking about. Um, well, um, let me see. Um, Moses, can you can you name a famous Kansan? Kansan, a famous person for, from Kansas. <laughs> Stan, naturally. <laughs> naturally, who's the most famous Kansan? The two most famous cancers are Dorothy and, Dorothy and Toto, all right? <laughs> and then the next most famous cancers are Kate, naturally, uh, Lindy, and, uh, and Town himself, all right? Okay, I'm going to start by introducing you a uh, sixth cancer, okay? Oh, okay, because you, you have five. <laughs> yes, naturally, but I need a sixth cancer, which is this guy here, who was from Wichita, and whose name was Robert Whitaker. All right? And why do we have a Robert, Mr. Robert Whitaker, or Dr. Professor Whitaker here? It's because in 1960, he proposed that diversity as a concept could be divided or composed of two different concepts, uh, or three, rather. You have a diversity, which he called gamma, di gamma diversity, which uh, would be the diversity at a large scale, uh, at the landscape scale, or, and that could be, in turn, made up of two different components. One would be called the alpha diversity, or the diversity at small scale, at local scale, and then the beta diversity, which was something that multiplied by alpha should give gamma diversity. So Whitaker actually defined uh, the concept of beta diversity as a quotient between the large scale diversity, gamma diversity in, in his terms, and the alpha diversity, which is the diversity at local scale, small scale. So let's say that if we had a mountain range, the gamma diversity of that mountain range would be the number of species in the entire mountain range whereas the alpha diversity would be the diversity you you'd see at each valley, each mountain top, each whatever. So when we go from alpha to gamma, we pass through beta. But beta is actually a different concept. And it's so different that has been interpreted by in, in many different ways a long time. So what is exactly gamma and alpha as they are interpreted in terms of each other? Or well, what the heck is diversity, in fact? You all know what diversity is. You have many definitions for this, all right? Let's go through some of them. But let's look at diversity from a slightly different point of view as we, we used to. We used to, to think in diversity, about diversity in terms of uh, the number of species or the proportion among abundances. Another way, slightly different way to look at diversity, which is a uh, way proposed by Tumisto, Jost, and others, is to look at diversity as a way to partition something. What we can divide a big thing into classes, an amount into different classes. This something can be essentially anything. It could be a sample, or it could be your data sets or it could be the entire biostenosis of, of place, whatever. What are the classes? The classes are naturally the distinct types of organisms. Those could be species, or those could be what I called yesterday, or the day before, yesterday I wasn't calling anybody anything, <laughs> what I call 
OTU, or Operational Taxonomical Units, which is basically what we ecologists uh, tend to pass for a species because we are lazy enough to classify to properly go to the, to the real species name. Okay, what are the units then? The units are the classes that can, the classes that can be enumerated into units. So the number of classes, let's say the number of species, is the number of classes as well. You can enumerate, you can tell how many classes, how many, in, into how many chunks you can divide a thing. You take a piece of paper, you divide it in chunks, each chunk can be one species. And the classes can be compared. You can take a piece of paper, divide it in chunks, and those chunks can be big or can be small. They might, be, might have different, I'm going to divide a sheet in chunks. If I can get hold of a sheet of paper, which tends to be difficult too. So this is the entire, the entire amount of things you're going to deal with. This could be the entire number of individuals. And if you divide it in two, you have two chunks. So you have two species. And this species has more individuals than this other. And then you divide this in three. And this is the most abundant species. And these two are the less abundant species. And you might even keep dividing things into smaller and smaller chunks. But the thing is that the total number of pieces is the total number of species, and I've lost my presenter. He's here. <coughs> so what can be size? What is this? Is this the number of individuals? Yes, it is, normally. But it can be anything else. It could be the biomass. It could be the coverage. It could be the effect of these species in the ecosystems in terms of, for instance, carbon intake, carbon turnover, or footprint, whatever. Over the years, I've come to terms with using uh, biomass as a, as a way to measure diversity for things that are quite difficult to weight, actually, like microarthropods. But not all measures can be used equally. It's completely different to use counts. Individuals can be counted then to use coverage that has to be divided into a continuous measure. To make it simple, it's different to use integral numbers than to use fractions or a con any other continuous measure. So if, divers if diversity is a way of partitioning, the space is the number of individuals in the inventory in the most classical term, and individuals can be partitioned into species so we have the two most basic uh, elements in the notation, N and S. N is number of individuals. It, as I told you before, it could be biomasses if the index is appropriate for continuous uh, numbers. And the S is the number of classes, which is number of species or num numbers of genera or numbers of family or whatever. So the number of possible classes into which the space can be reasonable partition, reasonable partition is alpha diversity. Why I say reasonable, reasonably partition? Because you cannot divide this thing into an equal, unequal components or unequal concepts. If I'm using a, a species that I measure in terms of individuals, I, can no, I cannot use in the same inventory another species for calculating diversity that is measured in terms of coverage. It, they have to be homogeneous. Also, in a sense, and for some purposes, it doesn't make sense to mix up uppers and peers. Well, in this case, it doesn't make sense to mix up whales and lions, because they belong to different spaces. So richness is the most basic concept, and it's and one that we've been using uh, uh, over and over during this course. Richness is just the number of classes. Suppose that we have this sheet of paper here, and has been, has been partitioned into small squares, but each square is not one species, but one individual. And the color of the tiles here represents the number of classes. So how many species do we have here? We have two species, white species and red species. So increasing <coughs> richness means partitioning the same space into more components. For instance, here we have three species. 
white, red, and blue. And therefore, the number of individuals into each class will reduce accordingly. And we have here four species. We have introduced the green, and again, the number of classes has increased, and the number of individuals per class has, di has diminished. However, the proportions between classes has remained constant. So, in so richness increases towards the right. This serves us to introduce a new concept, evenness. Not all partitions are created equal. Some partitions might be large, some partitions might be small, and the relationship between partitions is what we call evenness. What is the evenness? The evenness component is how close are the species in terms of numbers, whether those partitions are equal or unequal, or whether you have one species having a lot of individuals and another species having few individuals, or whether most species have the same number of individuals or frequencies. So what is alpha or high alpha diversity? High alpha diversity is normally associated with high evenness, but it's a different component from diversity. So when partitions tend to be equal, evenness is high. And if partitions tend to be different, evenness is low. A low alpha diversity is associated with low evenness. For instance, in our case, we finished here with four species. And if we maintain the same number of species, the same number of colors in this case, but we change the proportion of colors by making, for instance, the red species being extremely uh, successful ecologically and displacing other species, we are decreasing evenness. So in this case, you have less evenness and even less here, where most of the space is dominated by one single species, which is the red species, although the other species are also present. In terms of richness, those three cases are exactly the same. They have four species each. But this one has been dominated by the red species, so it has less evenness and therefore less diversity. It has more dominance. It's a dominant uh, <coughs> community. So when measuring diversity, we see these two components, richness and evenness, and we have to combine both. However, there are several ways to combine both. Uh, or we might even not combine any. We, we, could, we could reduce ourselves to using one single component, such as richness, number of species. There have been several proposals about how to combine into diversity, richness, and evenness. If those two parameters are completely independent from each other, then perhaps the Tuomisto definition, diversity is richness by evenness multiplied, or diversity uh, um, uh, times evenness, is probably the best one. However, just pointed out that this is not exactly uh, a monotonical function. Uh, well, the mathematics be below this is uh, are a little bit complex, but he proposed that in fact, what happens is that richness is the product of diversity by unevenness. By, uh, by unevenness, we mean dominance. So, well, they can be exchanged to each other. So, unevenness, what is unevenness? It's basically uh, diversity divided by richness, or the reverse of evenness. But there are dozens of possible formulations, of additional formulations. Let's explore some consequences of this. Uh, compositing of diversity. I have here a uh, fake, I mean it's fake because I made it myself on purpose, a uh, data set, which might resemble your data sets, but uh, you might see qu uh, quite easily that the numbers here are completely artificial. It's because it's been designed this way. The colors here are proportional to the number of individuals. Okay, and we have one sample here which I call the even sample, which has maximal evenness. All species, all 20 species, have exactly the same number of individuals, 50. Now, we have this lineal distribution here, in which all uh, species have a different number of individuals, but they are related to each other because every species has, has one more uh, individual than 
the species, uh, the, the less abundant species, the immediately less abundant species. So you have 31 individuals, 33, or two, I think it wasn't one, it was two, 31, 33, 35, etc. And you have the same kind of, of uh, distribution here, but with a little bit more difference between species, 24, 28, 32, 56, 40, etc. And then we have this distribution here, which I call logarithmic. In fact, this is E, E raised to one power that gives you to this logarithmic distribution in which this is the most abundant species, and this is a, a little bit more than half that, and this is a little bit more than half the, the one before, etc. All right? Those are uh, quite typical distributions that we find in nature. This one has no mathematical relationship be between uh, species. It's just a few very abundant species and a lot of less abundant species as it's usually found in nature. And this, is, and this one here is an extreme case in which you have a lot of single individual species and one extremely dominant species, right? <coughs> What's fun about this? The number of individuals here is exactly the same for each of those samples. It's, it adds up to 1,000 individuals, and each sample has exactly 20 species. 